Just wanted to do a brief look at this issue I'm selling here. I, I, this is one I actually have three copies of. So I'm uh, selling a few of the ones that I have, uh, duplicates and what have you. So this one is from March of 1977. Uh, here on the cover, you have Gary Simix and Jimmy Weinert. And inside you have uh, some a look at a really trick DG MR50. A uh, neat little machine. I don't think we, I don't remember actually getting the MR50s around here. I never saw them. Of course, I was really young when this when this magazine came out. I was seven years old. So this is a little bit before my time, but really neat machine. We also have a look at the Suzuki RM250B, which is the second year for the RM. Uh, RMs and the, uh, they came out originally, I guess the third year if you count the 125, but the second year for the 250. Uh, great, great magazine. Got some ads, classic ads for Lancer Leathers. A uh, little motocross action ad here. Baz, Baz's box, old Baz or Paul Boudreau, who was one of the guys at uh, Motocross Action. Cool little uh, picture of uh, Dave Miller, who just recently passed. Uh, rest in peace, Dave. Uh, one of the mad scientists of motocross. Uh, a lot of great stuff in these old issues. I, I love these old magazines. It's neat to look at another guy that's passed on, Al Baker, a uh, guy behind uh, bringing the Mugen to the U.S. and ran XRs only back in the day. This is cool. This is the old... Uh, Rider of the Year Award motocross action used to do. They actually used to give away trucks. The guys would win a truck, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. Uh, now, the uh, motocross action certainly wouldn't be giving away a truck these days. Uh, there's that really cool uh, DG MR50. That thing is neat. That thing would be neat now. Look at the travel on it. It's a really cool little motorcycle. A little two-stroke uh, two stroke mini from Honda. Like I said, I, I, I know they were, um, I guess, for sale just for a few years here in the U.S., uh, by the time I got into riding, you know, the XRs were pretty much it. You couldn't get those anymore. A test of the uh, RM250, you know, Jeff Jennings, uh, fast kid back then, uh, JT Racing ad. Got some coverage of the old Trans AMAs, uh, which were really great for a while. Uh, the fall series that kind of went away uh, in the, I guess, the late 70s, maybe the early 80s. was uh, Probably by before the 80s started, I think the Trans AMAs went away. So there's some cool race coverage in here. Uh, some classic stuff here. This is a, a shot of Graham Noyce, who would go on to win a, a world motocross title in the 500 class after he got off the Mako here in a factory Honda. That is, I think, Brad Lackey and uh, maybe Gary Simix here in this uh, centerfold. It's so cool. The race coverage on these old magazines is so much better. You know, motocross action now, they, they pretty much just do, uh, you know, a couple of uh, looks at two strokes and modern bikes they almost do no race coverage and you sure don't get uh, nearly as much as you get in these old magazines there's a lot more uh, stuff about the sport this is back when jody i think actually went to the races and there's a lot of cool video i'm a lot of cool uh, pictures in this magazine it's definitely a classic uh one of my favorites uh eras of moto again a little before my time motocross cat it's a strange little thing motocross cat was around for a while <laughs> i don't know what was up with that it was a strange little comic strip they had with uh Motocross cap for a while. You have a really cool article on uh, the Aberg 500 back in the 19, I guess, 77, 78, somewhere in that range. Uh, Yamaha actually had a, one of their TT500s, and uh, Aberg raced it in the uh, the GPs, actually on a four-stroke. I think it was the last four-stroke to win a, uh, a GP until the 90s when, uh, you know, they started coming, the Husabergs and stuff started coming out and the uh, big Husqvarnas. So this is a really neat machine at the time. The TTs were real popular off-road bikes, but they weren't really motocrossers. And this uh, Aberg machine was one hell of a machine at the time. I know a lot of guys still reach the uh, HL 500s and what have you. So in any case, I'll be selling this. This is one of my favorite photos. This is an amazing Billy Grossi picture. I have no idea how he's doing this. I mean, maybe he wrecked two seconds after this, but this is just an amazing photo. And then on the back here, you have a, a really cool um, <laughs> ad for Boltaco. Basically making fun of Husqvarna and the fact that they make a bunch of different things. And I guess it could be Yamaha, too. Uh, they made pianos and what have you. So in any case, uh, if you like this magazine, give it a uh, give it a like here and uh, try and win it on the eBay.